حيدر إمامي يا علي 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 حبي وغرامي يا علي 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 حيدر إمامي علي علي أحلى الأسامي علي علي الحمدين <تصفيق> 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 السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله. Um, as I had promised yesterday, today we will be beginning our discussion on Surah Al-Mubarakatul Yaseen, one of the blessed surahs of the Holy Quran, a surah which I'm sure that all of you have read numerous times and probably have gone through the translation of it a number of times as well. We are told that this surah is a Makki surah. That means it was revealed in the city of Makkah in Mukarrama. A majority of the suwar of the Holy Quran have been revealed in Makkah. Approximately 80 or so uh, surahs of the Holy Quran are Makki surahs. The remainder are Madani surahs and some surahs have got elements of both. Ayats that have been revealed in Makkah and ayat verses that have been revealed in Medina. One of the trends that we find, and, and if you remember that on the very first night I had mentioned that I am not a mufassir, I am not a commentator of Quran and Majid. The Quran and Majid itself mentions that if it was revealed on a mountain, the mountain would have crumbled. So I don't have the ability to do a tafsir, I'm just doing a discussion on the surah. What we find is that one of the trends in the uh, Makki surahs is that a lot of times they talk about or predominantly talk about Akidah, Iman, Tawheed, Nabuwat, the day of Qiyamah, what will happen. And this is a trend that because of the situation in the city of Makkah, Iman was needed to be conveyed much strongly. Iman, faith was extremely important to make sure that the Mu'mini knew what they were following, knew what they were believing, making sure their belief was in order. So that is why the trend has been that the Makki, the Makki surahs talk more about Aqidah, more about what we will call the usul din as contrasted to the Madani surahs, which as a trend, as a general rule, often talk about the, 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 the codes in Islam, the furwe the, um, uh, the actions that a believer must have. So, for example, Salat, Saum, Hajj, Zakat, all those are predominantly the themes of the Madani surahs. Makki surahs talk, as I said, more about you know, Allah Ta'ala, about Tawheed, and, and believing in the Nabuwat, and, and ensuring you understand what is the day of Qiyamah, and many of the, uh, the issues in that case. So Surah Yasin is a Makki surah. One of the uh, hadith, and I've been using the reference of uh, Sheikh Kafami's Misbah, as well as one of the references that Allama Majlisi in his Bihar has been given as far as the Fadail of the surah is concerned. It is narrated by Imam Jafar ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. In, in which the Imam says that this surah, anybody who recites it for the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala, if they recite it at night time, 1,000 angels are delegated to protect that person throughout the night. If they recite it in the morning, 1,000 angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect that person for the entire day. Very blessed surah of the Quran Majid. If you recite it in the cemetery, which I know that it is the habit of a number of the mu'mineen, a number of the believers, do recite it in the, in the Qabrasan. I know that it, it is very common for us to recite it on Shabi Juma, Laylatul Juma, tonight, inshallah. It is narrated that if you recite it in the Qabristan, in the cemetery, not only does the punishment or the difficulties of those who are Ahlul Qubur reduce, their punishment gets reduced, they get their sins forgiven, and at the same time, we also get forgiven so much that the number of the marhumin that are in that Qabristan, that is the amount of thawab that we get, amount of forgiveness that we also get ourselves. 
from the narrations of the Torah, it is narrated that the Surah Yasin, because of course we know that the Quran and Majid is from the very beginning. It was there, for, but of course a part of it was included in the Injil, a part of it was in the Torah, a part of it was in the Zabur. So the same Imam is quoted as saying that in the Torah, Surah Yasin is referred to as a, as a crown, as a Taj, you know, the crown that is on top. That crown is a protection, the crown is a sort of an elegance, uh, almost a, you can say a symbol of royalty. And that crown protects us and gives us the good of the dunya and the good of the akhira as well. And so Yasin has got all these benefits, all these fawaid and the um, holy prophet of Islam himself, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has been quoted as saying, I think we can, one more salat with a little bit of enthusiasm. Rasulullah has been quoted as saying that everything has a center, everything has a heart. And Surah Al Yasin is the heart of the Quran, it's the Qalb Al Quran, the heart of the Holy Quran. And the Prophet has been actually quoted as saying that many of the themes that are in the entire Quran are included in Surah Al Mubarak Al Yasin. So the, the themes that are in the entire Qur'an are included in Yasin. Much of the knowledge of the Qur'an is hidden in Surah al al Yasin. So <coughs> the Surah starts out, and I know that yesterday the Mu'minin were very patient with me. I took a little extra time yesterday. I don't know if I should give the kafara by shortening it today or not. I, uh, uh, Shakil bhai, I'm looking towards you just to make sure that the Mu'minin are not inconvenienced by my extra time yesterday. May Allah bless you all for your sabr and everything, inshallah. I am going to try and stay within the, the context of the timings. And of course, inshallah, it is my intention to try and do the discussion on the entire surah. But should we not be able to do that because of the, uh, the, the, the beauty, the weight and the importance and the content of the surah, then in advance I'm asking you for forgiveness. The surah Mubarak starts out with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim as do 113 sawar of the Holy Quran. Surah Al-Tawbah or Surah Barat is the only surah of the Quran in Majid that does not have Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim at the beginning. As Ja'far Ishiyas, we believe that the Bismillah is a part of that surah. It is included as a part of the surah. It is not separate. It is not something that is an addendum or an additive. It is included as a part of the surah of the Quran and Majid. So Allah Ta'ala, make sure now, again, I wanted to clarify one thing. That if, I, and perhaps many of you or most of you may have come across many Zakirin and ulama who have talked about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And have gone into a discussion or a commentary on the Bismillah. And again, I'm counting on you to be aware of that because, of course, that would take us at least two or three days. And I think that, inshallah, we want to try and get into the, the surah itself. So, Bismillah, of course, the Quran and Majid's most, almost all of the surah except one, uh, all of the surah, so what, except one starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah is reminding us of His grace. As the dua mentioned, as uh, Mawlana Sheikh Sab mentioned in his uh, tarjuma, in his translation of the dua of, of Mahar Ramadan, that Allah's rahmat, Allah's mercy, Allah's you know, forgiving of us is very encompassing. It's all encompassing. And so Allah is reminding us every time we open the Quran in Majid, we recite. And Bismillah is not only when we recite the Quran, not only when we recite duas. It is narrated by the Aimma Ma'asumin alayhim salatu wasalam that any time we start any work, if you want to give that work legitimacy, whether you're going to work, whether you're going to school, whether you're filling petrol in the car, whether you're standing uh, purchasing groceries, anything you start, say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and that work inshallah will get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything, not just limited to the Quran, Quran and Majid or duas or the, the, the salat or anything, but any work that we begin because we're saying that I begin Bismillah, bi ismillahi rahman rahim I'm beginning, I'm starting with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the most merciful, the most generous, the most kind, the most loving. And you know, the, the, the philosophy behind Rahman and Rahim is that one talks about how Allah Ta'ala has been generous and merciful to all of His creation. Everything that benefits from Allah, whether somebody believes in Allah or rejects Allah. Allah Ta'ala gives from His sustenance, gives from His treasures, everybody. He gives uncontrollably. And then there is also the one part of Allah's generosity and grace that is specifically reserved for the mu'mineen. 
and for the believers, and most of that will come out in the Akhirah when, when, when we shall go to paradise, it is narrated that the mercy of Allah is divided into 100 parts, into 100 parts. Out of that 100 parts, one part is what has been providing sustenance and risk from the beginning of Adam's time till the end of Qiyamah. One part of that 100 is what has provided raindrops, provided fruits, provided vegetation, provided water, provided everything that we have breathed, eaten, drunk, whatever. One part of that 100 from the time of Adam till the day of Qiyamah has been sustaining the world. 99 is for the believers in the Akhirat. One salat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. So the generosity of Allah becomes very evident. Then the surah starts out. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yaseen. Wal Qur'an al-Hakim. Yaseen. Here the commentators, a small group of commentators, take, because these are amongst the huruf al the special letters, ya and then the seen. And a small group of commentators believe that this is addressing insan, ya insan. It's a, it's a shorter version of ya insan. O oh, mankind. A majority of the commentators of the Quran and Majid are saying that this is uh, one of the titles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the names of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa As Allah ta'ala has got a hundred names and each name has a meaning, a beauty, a significance, the same way Rasulullah, according to some rewaya, has got a hundred names as well, or titles, and the Quran and Majid mentions many of them, Siraj, Munir, Munir, Taha, Yasin, Muzammil, Muddasir, numerous, Ya Yuhar Rasul, Ya Yuhar Nabi, many titles, names of the Holy Prophet are mentioned. In fact, some of the Qurans that I've seen on the front page, they used to, uh, this one doesn't, but uh, they actually have uh, the names of Allah on, on one, the front page, and the names of Rasulullah on the, on, the, on the other page, on the back, inside back page. So the commentators are of the majority opinion, this is, to, this is one of the names of the Holy Prophet. Then Allah is taking, Wal Quran al Hakim. I swear by the wise Quran. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes, is taking a qasam, and in, even in Juz Amma and in different places of the Quran and Majid, we see a number of oaths that Allah takes. And he comes and he mentions a statement after those oaths are taken. If you see Surah Isham, Surah Ala, many of the Quran and Majid's sawar have got this, in, in this content in them. Allah Ta'ala is giving a very important statement. So here, whenever we have Allah Ta'ala taking an, a qasam, an oath, at that time, we have to understand, and we must be very clear in our minds, that number one, the thing that the qasam is being taken of, as well as the statement that will be following for which the qasam has been taken, both are extremely important. If you think, for example, for a, for a moment, if I tell you that, oh, my house is like this, I swear by my socks, mozaki qasam kharao. You will all laugh at me and say, okay, your house might be clean, your house might be like this, your house is very close. You know, people always say that, you know, in, in, in many of these western countries, they'll say, Gar baju mache, baju mache. our house is very close, and you'll be driving for 40 minutes and you still don't come to the house. And they say, I swear my house is very close, but, you know, I swear by my shoes. Then you know that this house is at least two hours away or one hour away. Why? Because something like shoes or socks does not have a value, does not have significance. Unless you have gold or silk shoes or gold or silk socks, that's a different situation. But as far as taking a, an oath is concerned to try and prove a point that I want to say, it has to be something important, significant. And it has to be something of value. So if I'm telling you something and I've taken a custom on something that is not very important or valuable to me, then obviously there's no value to the statement that's coming. So even if one is important but the beginning is not, then it is irrelevant. If I take a custom on my children and I tell you that today's food was very delicious, then you'll say, okay, but now you're, you're downplaying because, you, you know, I'm sure you'll say that to every food. When you're fasting and you break your food, even if somebody was to give you beans and carrots, you will think that that's the most delicious food you've ever had because you've been hungry. And so the value of that statement must be kept in mind. So whether with a qasam, the thing that the qasam is taken on, or the statement that follows the qasam, if they're both significant and important, then we see that there is an importance given to the rest of what we have to say. Allah Ta'ala is making it known that I am taking a qasam on what? On this Qur'an. His book. 
His words, His message, Allah Ta'ala is taking a, a qasam, an oath on that. And the title or the, 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 the adjective describing the Qur'an and pertaining to the Qur'an, it's not just wal Qur'an, Yasin wal Qur'an. Allah Ta'ala says, wal Qur'an al-Hakim. Qur'an al-Hakim. Usually, Hakim refers to a living person, a living entity. That person is very, somebody who is very smart, intelligent, in some, in some of the Asian subcontinent, uh, Hakim refers to a doctor, a very smart, intelligent doctor. Um, but it symbolizes a person or some living entity. You talk to somebody as a Hakim, and you say that that, is, you know, that person, he is very Hakim, he is very wise, he is extremely knowledgeable, he is smart, and, and, and whatever. Allah Ta'ala is taking that same terminology for a book. But not just any book. His book. His Quran. And he's informing and reminding the world that this Quran, that whatever you think is Hakim, whatever your concept of Hikmah is, everything that you have got in your mind of Hikmah, it is in the Quran in Majid. The wisdom, the knowledge, the whole essence of the universe is in the Qur'an and Majid. And especially because that is why the Prophet has been quoted as saying, the knowledge of the entire universe is in the Qur'an and Majid. The entire knowledge of the Qur'an and Majid is in the Surah of Yasin. The entire knowledge of Surah Yasin is in Surah Fatiha. The entire knowledge of Surah Fatiha is in Bismillah rahman rahim The whole knowledge of Bismillah is in the Ba of Bismillah. And Amir al-Muhidimah, the Prophet said, that Ali is the Nukta Tazira Ba. He is the knowledge that is the dot that is beneath the Ba. One salat of Muhammad and al Muhammad. Inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow from here. I'm not sure tomorrow's Juma, so if we will be having a session or not, I have not asked yet. But inshallah, if it is tomorrow, fine. Otherwise, inshallah, it'll continue the, the day after uh, uh, on that. So the Quran and Hakim, we'll just finish, inshallah, what the, you know, the philosophy, the concept of Hakim is. And then we'll come to what Allah Ta'ala is saying and, and the, the important statement, the weighty statement that will come, inshallah. So we pray to Allah. If there's any questions, just generally, and I don't want to uh, take too much time on that, but if there's any questions about just these first three verses, including the Bismillah, then inshallah I will try to address that. Otherwise, G. Yes. G. No, no, the, the entire surah, the, the, the fadail of the surah is the, the whole surah. I, I'm just going into, into uh, bits and pieces because just to give an explanation so that I'm able to do that. But the, the whole surah is known as Qalb al-Quran, the, the entire surah, from the beginning till the end, inshallah. Jazakallah, thank you so much. Thank you for clarifying because sometimes in the speed of my, my talk I might overlook that. So thank you, shukriya. Inshallah. Rabbana taqabba minna inna kanta samil alim. We ask Allah to forgive our I ask Allah to forgive my shortcomings in my, in my explanation or any of the sins and my faults that I have. Allah, forgive all of our sins, inshallah. Ya Allah, give us a strength and topic to remain away from sins. Accept our amal, accept our fasting, our recitation of Quran and Majid, our recitation of the salat, the psalm, doing the psalm, the tasbihat, the dhikr, inshallah. We ask you, Ya Allah, to hasten the return of our Mawla, Imam al-Hujjah. Protect the ulama who are serving while the Imam is in occultation and accept our deeds in this month of Ramadan al-Sharif and the oppression and the zulm that is taking place all over the world. If we can recite one surah fatiha for all the marhumin who are no longer with us, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Astayinah nisrat. Surat al-Ladhina namta alayhim. Ghaidin magdubi alayhim. Ghaidin magdubi alayhim.